Everyone's been saying I need a new phone, so I got a new phone, but I thought I'd go fancy because you know those like, you know the flip phones? I thought I'd get a, Gal a Samsung flip because it's like the height of technology. They're bigger than I expected. Gotta be honest. And it flips open from that. It's, it's getting ridiculous, isn't it? How does it, this won't fit in my pocket. Ah, uh, look, obviously you know why you clicked on this video. This is apparently a screen that you can draw on and it's freaking huge. And I got a freaking huge one. I wanna explain a little bit later as to what I plan to use this for, but apparently you can use it like you can use any digital tablet. So I'm gonna put that to the test while unboxing a big toy for our amusement. <laughs> I think I need another pair of hands. Rob! Hi, Rob. We're lifting. I think we're gonna try and go for the sides. Oh. Okay. This video, I was just worth saying, this video is not sponsored. But we will try out my brushes on this thing. We'll take them for a spin. I, I haven't seen these around before. And it's not meant for artists. It's meant for corporate, which is why it's not advertised to the general consumer. But apparently, it also can detect brushes, which seems like a really cool thing to try from the perspective of an artist. So we're going to see how far we could take this artistically. Let's set it up, shall we? Okay, oh, it's bigger mounted than you than I expected. Okay, so, oh, and it, it turns. That's scary. Yeah, okay, we should, well, it's not secured yet. Bring it out HDMI cable. Hello, computer. Is it an on button? Okay, does it have pressure sensitivity? No, or at least not this version of the app. Is that a race? No, that's a, ooh. That's cool. Oh, this is it. Oh, 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 yeah. Page two. Yep, didn't like that one. Let's start again. Now I don't know what to do. That's as far as I thought this th video through. Say something quick. Gareth, save me. A banana. Ah! Rob, say something else. Draw a pirate ship. That's a pirate banana. Now I've been advertised to believe that this works with brushes. <gasps> it does have pressure sensitivity. It doesn't change the brush shape, even if I change the brush size. Oh, that's smaller. It does. That's really cool. Okay, so hang on. Wide, full pressure, you know, okay. It's not the most graceful thing on the planet. I think you need the right kind of brushes. This one feels pretty good. <laughs> Feels really good. Give that a go. Yeah. Now mix that with. Okay. Yeah. That's it's mixing. It's it's this is good. This is a good art thing. Ha ha. So let's get a smaller brush. Interesting. It fights. This is really cool. So I can figure out. Okay. So oil. <laughs> this is really good. Oh, it mixes. It mixes. That this is fun. We've got the ball rolling. Let's actually make some cool art and uh, see how this goes as an art device. Let's start off with a landscape, shall we? All right, we've done enough unboxing. It's time to see if this actually can make art. There's only so much you can tell by putting a squiggle or two down. I'm gonna try and paint something. I'm in watercolor mode because it seemed pretty dynamic. And while I could feel the limitations pretty quickly at the same time, I was like very surprised as to how good it could look with a little bit of finicking. By relatively constantly eye dropping, you could create some nice gradients. And I guess depending on the texture you're trying to put down in this case clouds and a sky and moving on to mountains it can look really cool i really like this result and the gradient is subtle and it's kind of pretty and to be honest i found myself fairly organically switching between the medium and large brushes because it was responding mostly the way i might expect if i were using large and medium watercolor brushes it's when i move to the foreground that things get a little shakier First of all, finding the right colors can be a little tricky. And just like in MS Painter, there's only so many times you can undo. So I couldn't be super fearless. I had to figure out the direction I was confident in pretty quickly because there's only so far I could backtrack. And as you can see, the details of the trees were not really working really well as an allusion to detail and not really working well as actual detail. It was very blobby. With that said, 
By this stage, I was sort of getting a feel for the tool and wasn't expecting much more. And in the grand scheme of things, like when I sort of lean back and look at the whole thing, it's pretty cool. You don't expect a TV that isn't an art device first and foremost to actually feel so fluid and capable of doing some fun little art things. I wouldn't use it as an art tool, but the art tools it comes with are better than I expected, which is cool. I like it. Like I like my artwork and I didn't hate painting on a big TV. I wouldn't do it like as my default art choice, but the fact that it works with brushes and doesn't look awful is really cool. There's an update. Let's update. In this video, I'm gonna update a device. Nothing could go wrong. <gasps> it's gone! I spent an hour on that. All right, I think we've sort of reached the limit of what we can do with its own painting software. So now I'm gonna see how far I can stretch it in the way I like painting. In Photoshop with professional quality brushes. <laughs> Funny I should mention that because I've just made, released the best brushes on the planet, but they're not just for Photoshop. They're for Critter and Procreate, for Clip Studio Paint. And you can get the brush pack in my Ultimate Digital Painters bundle where Alicia and I teach you in our Ultimate Digital Painters handbook how to paint start to finish, leaving no stone unturned so you can learn how to digital paint like a pro. You probably can't follow along on a TV like this, but you know what? We're gonna give it a crack. Robert is here to do the tech stuff that I don't do. Here's Photoshop. So this is the default and it doesn't work out the box. So you download a third party resource that allows us to hack into the mainframe. Is that correct? Something like that. Yeah, we're getting very technical here, so. Try now. That's all right. Oh, that's not too unresponsive either. Okay, so here's the question. Does the brush size change? No. Mushroom kingdom, here we come. Maybe there's some other art programs that'll work well with this. Do we have Fresco? I'm expecting this to react the same way Photoshop did, but it is a different program. That's very brush first. So maybe it would allow finger painting on touch devices. It's got a mobile version, let's see. All right, I think we're in business. And you know the best part is, you know those four programs I mentioned that support my brushes? Well, there is a fifth. Fresco supports my ultimate digital brushes. This is perfect. I never thought I'd actually be painting with my digital brushes with brushes. Let's give it a crack, shall we? Here they are. And I can add favorites. What? I'm gonna build my list of favorites. So I actually have uh, a set of favorites, but I think just by how Fresco imports it hasn't, in, uh, you know, hasn't separated that. Construction, that is a favorite. My pencil soft, Jazz's ink is a favorite. Ink liner, marker, fine oil brush, thick oil brush, hair thin, hair thick, and hair soft. Let's call it done. So now I've got a list of favorites that are <laughs> my brush pack. So actually, I've got to use a, I've got to use a pencil for my. Pencil tool. <laughs> okay, so it's not <laughs> it's not pressure sensitive, so it's hard to sort of be nuanced. But I reckon we can have a bit of fun with this. Let's go back to painting, and hopefully the TV won't delete my artwork this time because I'm working on a computer now. So let's give it a crack and see if the TV is decent as an art tablet. Running on Windows 11 using Adobe Fresco rather than forcing Photoshop to work because it really didn't like the whole like touch based finger painting process thing. I don't know. There was no way we could make Photoshop work smoothly with this setup, but Fresco seemed to work out the box. And with that said, it still is a vastly underwhelming painting experience without pressure sensitivity and with it being a fairly slow response rate as far as you know, touch and, and stylus devices goes. But the fact that it works and is pretty organic, even with the brush mode is really cool. With a basic sketch down, I moved on to painting and that's where it gets a little bit more fun. It was a little too painful just with the sketching pencils, not having that pressure sensitivity on the television. But at least with the paint and watercolor and the oils in the foreground, I could change the flow rate, which made it feel a little bit like it was going down more incrementally. I just kept this piece pretty blocky and abstract because look, let's face it, with the tools I'm using, there's not a lot of refining I can do. So leaning into that, I just did a bit of a fun little self-portrait to sort of see how the tools felt and uh, if I could have a bit of fun with it. And I think the answer is yeah, I can have a bit of fun with it. Not a lot more than that though. 
Now I did say at the start when I was unboxing it, I'd explain what I got it for. I didn't get this TV for art. I did get it for the corporate stuff it's actually marketed for. We use whiteboards throughout the building to brainstorm thumbnails for videos. And we also obviously use TVs for different calls and conferences and presentations and stuff. So I thought it'd be really cool to have something that does both. And the thumbnail thing is really interesting because we're finding it's in fact, I'll show you what I mean. So this is an example where we just brainstorm some thumbnails. They're not the prettiest, but we also hesitate to wipe them off because even though we have this grid that we draw thumbnails in, you just sort of feel guilty wiping off someone's previous thumbnail or there might be a good idea you want to build upon. I don't know, there's just something that prevents you wiping it off and doing more brainstorming. <laughs> Same goes with this, this is the upstairs one. We have thumbnail brainstorms that we feel guilty wiping off, including game dev stuff that we feel like we might lose or forget if we wipe them off. And thumbnails, they just end up living here forever because we don't want to wipe off what other people have done. So the idea is now people can freely do that without feeling like they're imposing on other people's stuff. That's the unexciting reason we got it. It's a cool, fun toy. Just saw it as a huge opportunity to play with and see if we can make art out of it. And hey, you know what? It sort of works. I do think the native art tools of the actual whiteboard TV thing are better than running it on a PC. So I think I'm gonna flip back over and wrap up this video with, you know what? Let's, let's, flip, let's flip things up a bit. God, it's heavy. Ugh. Go. Oh, I'll, I'll do that. I'll fix it off camera, but let's, uh, let's, see. let's see if we can make something cool. Now the first order of business in creating one final artwork is flipping the Samsung Flip. And I don't know why they called it the Flip, because it's really not easy to flip. It doesn't come with a stand to flip it with. I bought the stand separately and it's really goddamn heavy. Flipping hard to flip. But once it was flipped and I had it in a portrait mode and got about painting, I have to say, I really got lost in this process and found it way more satisfying than I did even before. Why? I mean, maybe the oil paint was more satisfying to work with than the watercolor, but actually I think it's because my brain disassociated from this being a TV or a tablet. You see, when I was painting in watercolor, it was still in that TV mode and I just felt like I was drawing on a TV that's not very well equipped to be drawn on. But painting with this almost decent paint brush mode on this almost decent paint TV in a portrait mode really made me feel like I was painting on a canvas. And I actually felt like I glimpsed a sort of utopian future. I mean, it makes sense to me. As I'm using it, I'm like, I can see this. If this were refined, if this were actually made for this use and it wasn't so rough around the edges for it, this would be incredible for artists. Like just imagine a digital canvas that you can paint and make, learn to paint on without the expense of oils. Like good quality paints are expensive, but if you had that taken out of your way, and if you had lear learning resources that were integrated as part of your technology, there would be no barrier to learning traditional methods of art. On top of that, yeah, obviously we have this very annoying palette that keeps popping up every time I put my brush onto the TV, but imagine it separate. Imagine if I actually held in my hand a, an iPad style sort of device that was organic to hold like a palette and I used the brushes on the palette to mix my paints and I could save my different paint schemes or try different materials with the palette and the canvas. It's not as silly as I thought it might be. And in fact, I can see huge possibilities for what learning to paint might look like and also mixing mediums and getting ambitious without the cost. I mean, obviously a device like that would be very expensive, but so is oil paint. I've spent thousands of dollars on oil paints in my life and I'm not even an oil painter. So, you know, this ain't such a stupid idea and it wasn't such a stupid experience. I really got lost in it. It was really fun. And there it is. I actually painted with, I have to say, credit to whoever developed this thing. The brush mode feels really cool. It, it is a gimmick, but it's fun. It feels really good and it gives me a glimpse of what could be done. And gimmick aside, it was really fun. And yeah, this is gonna go on to being more of a, you know, using it in team meetings and scribbling and stuff. But there is potential here that I didn't expect there to be. It's quite exciting to think about, but for now, this is what we've explored. I hope you've enjoyed coming on this journey with me. Make sure to subscribe for more fun with blah, 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 and make sure to blah, 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 and if you do the blah, 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 do the blah, blah, blah. That's basically what people hear when I sign off on a YouTube video. So let's switch it up a bit and say, don't you dare answer my message. It's private. 
I got to go.